Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back. It's Friday. I told you I'll do some Friday content. Anyway, we are cleaning and prepping the bulldog. Yeah, the old bulldog. And, uh, well, I enjoyed it late last night while I was watching some TV. I set it down and fell asleep. Um, no, not on the couch and burned the house down. <laughs> no, I just uh, finished what I was doing and, and curled up and watched some late night TV and that was about it. But we're out here and I want to use this pipe because it, it does work very well. It's a favorite of mine. You've seen it plenty of times. Yes. So with that being said, we're going to just do some prep while I get ready to share something. You already kind of know what I'm going to share. If you read the thumbnail, <laughs> you know what I'm going to share. You already know. The mystery's not there. There's no mystery. No secrets. No, but, well, we'll get into it and talk about it here in a moment. Yes. So, while we do that, we're cleaning our pipe. We're going to enjoy some Three Nuns. I actually like this uh, blend. It's quite nice. It's very unassuming. Uh, it's not overly powering. It's it's not overpowering, I should say. Not overly powering. It's, what kind of English is that? Uh, <laughs> it's bad English. <laughs> Don't listen to me. Um, anyways, let's see here. So, yeah. We are doing some nice Friday content. It's late in the day. I got up this morning and... Uh, I got kind of busy with, well, having coffee. That's always important. And then I was talking on the phone with some other lantern collectors. Uh, shout out to Steve Spaulding. That was a nice conversation we had this morning. And also, I don't know if John Chittam has got a, a subscription here or watches my videos. If he doesn't, I don't blame, you know, <laughs> that's, his, that's his choice. Um, anyways, but um, spoke with him for a while. So that was good. Had some good conversations. Yeah. And... Uh, so it was a good morning, and then we ran off to do some errands, hit the thrift store that we like, and uh, all that. So yes, it was a good morning. Came home late, uh, well we had to do some grocery shopping and all that sort of thing. So busy, very busy today. Now I finally have some time to myself, and I'm out here doing a video. Yeah, I'm prepping my, my pipe here for our little conversation and uh, everything. So, yes, we're gonna have a nice little video, I think. I think so. Anyways, we have something fun to share, some good conversation, hopefully, and I hope that you guys enjoy this video. Um, anyways, I treated myself to a lantern. Yeah, I did. And it's that one right there. It is a Dietz OK. Yeah, you're probably thinking, didn't you have one of those? Didn't you have an OK? Yeah, I did. I had an SG and L OK. Well, gee, Rob, what happened to it? I sold it. <laughs> yeah, I sold it. And you might be thinking, like, geez, why did you do that? What, what what was the matter with it? Well, nothing really. I mean, it it was a fine lantern. It was a good lantern, and I had it for well, a few years now. I had it since 2019. And uh, it was a good piece. It was actually one that I purchased early on from Lantern Joe. And he had it on his uh, eBay, and I won it on eBay. It was before he started using his Antique Lantern uh, company's name on his eBay account. Um, anyway, I paid a fair price for it, I think, at the time. Because uh, I, I kind of got the bug of finding one, and he had one up for sale. And I liked the fact that it had the bottom stamp of the SGNL logo, which was pretty cool. Uh, and I enjoyed that lantern for a while. I did. I enjoyed it very much. And... It was a good lantern, and, uh, well, when push came to shove, I decided I actually really wanted a Dietz example. And there was one on eBay, uh, just 
months ago. And it was a beautiful example. It had all the it had all the character and the, the age and all that stuff that I keep yammering on about. I like. And uh, so I I made a I played for it, I made a bid on it, and sadly I was outbid by oh twenty, thirty dollars. But it went for a lot. It did. It did go for a lot, so I was almost relieved that I didn't that I didn't win it. But anyway. Uh, wasn't meant to be. Wasn't meant to be. And then so now, a uh, friend, um, Steve Spaulding, he's a member of the Tubular Landing Group. He's also a very well-known railroad collector. Um, and he and I, we've been talking quite a bit. And every week we'll have a nice, you know, leisure afternoon chat. Uh, and uh, we just talk about the fun stuff, you know, lanterns and all that jazz. Uh, and, well, he... He's been pulling things out of his collection, and he's been showing me some things. And so, you know, I've passed the opportunity on to some of the other friends I have who were looking for something. And, well, he showed me an okay. And I said, oh, yeah, that's nice. That's a nice lantern. And he's like, well, yeah, if you're interested, we can work something out. So we did. We worked something out. And uh, I sent him a really nice ruby flash. No. It's a ruby cast globe uh, with the city of L.A. Uh, etched on it. Um, I, I had it in my city of L.A. Hilo, but I, I knew it was a hot blast style. I really wanted a fit a fits all style that was etched. So I'm keeping my eyes open for one of those. But I sent that globe up to him, and he sent me the, the OK. Of course, there was a cash exchange. And we came to a good price, and everything was great. Happy both ends. Well... That's it, and it came on Wednesday. Yeah, so we'll we'll uh, show you. I'll show it to you guys here, and we'll talk a bit after I get this lit. Hold on a second. Sorry about that. That was the wife. Got to answer those texts. <laughs> anyway, so here it is. Deed's okay. This is a nice example. This is just how you want them. In my opinion, this is really ideal. It is. Now this is the fun part. This is the part I really like. Yeah. You see that? Mm-hmm. Ain't that nice? It is. Good old bottom stamp. Now there's been some discussion. Fast. Uh, <laughs> people say, hey, when did they start doing that? And when did they stop doing that? Well, Dietz and SGNL, of course, at that time were, you know, closely related. They were. Gotta keep this going. Anyway, they started using that bottom stamp. They were branding the bottom of their founts. I would say as early as 1894, 95, right around there. Any lantern that I've had so far that has a last patent of 1893 usually will have a bottom stamp. And so that would, I would say between 1893 through 1895 or 6, they did the bottom stamp. Yeah. Why did they stop? Well, um, some collectors uh, suggest that Dietz and SGNL stopped doing that feature uh, because it did weaken the metal. And that's not a point where you want to weaken your metal since it holds the fuel. And, well, you know, it... it it didn't really necessarily weaken it, I would say. I would say that uh, when you put creases in metal, it can make it stronger. Mm -hmm. 
but they did have to use probably a thinner metal to do it. And that would mean a likelihood of rust holes uh, compensating your fount. I don't know if they were doing that in the era, but at any rate, it was an extra cost, I'm sure, to do that. Uh, and they decided it wasn't really necessary because you weren't going to really see it since the lantern sits on a shelf or on a table uh, for the most part and it's not hanging so you can't really just look up and see it all the time. Although that'd be nice. <laughs> um, so the Circle Cross logo was abandoned after a couple of years. Yeah. But they used it for a while, uh, especially on their crates and whatnot. And so I think it was a really handsome design. I like it. it reminds me of the Griswold cast iron uh, skillets uh, that have that Circle Cross logo. Or even the gold medal um, logo that you see on fruit crates from California. Mm -hmm. But anyways, uh, anyway, the Santa Fe Railroad, duh, <laughs> that's the big one. Circle Cross logo, yeah, that's a good, that's a good look. I like it. But anyways, this lantern did come with a, a marked globe, Dietz marked globe. See, came with this. Fits great. Fits actually really well. But for whatever reason, I like burning a ruby globe, and this is a fits all. So this is later period, but it, it is a, a Dietz fits all hot blast style. So it's right around the early 1900s, but it fits well too. Um, it, it is a little bit snug in there, which is okay. I like a snug fit, but it doesn't completely clear the chimney or smoke bell. Mm -hmm. So it's a little challenging to operate it that way, but it's not the worst. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't really scrape or anything that's significant, but it does. Uh, it's not a complete clearance. But I'll have to look at the uh, patent dates here and see what the last one is. I haven't taken a close look at it. I've just been burning it and enjoying it. Yeah. But let's light it, shall we? All right. There we go. Come on. There we go. Now this is the cool thing about OK. So they're hinged on the back behind the cone. Of the, uh, the back of the side of the uh, manifold and they just tilt right back and it's a sturdy fount you know it's got a nice wide skirt on there so it's not going to tip over no but it's got a nice brass burner which looks original you know uh, i put a wick in there and i've been burning it it's actually a really nice burner yeah yep i can't tell if this is brass or steel i think it's steel no, I think it's brass. It's really dirty. It's hard to tell, right? I think it is brass. It should be brass. By this era, it still should be brass. Mm-hmm. But anyway, let's get her going. So you can see it and enjoy the burn. Mm-hmm. Let's guide this back under there. There we go. Ta-da! It's a nice burn, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, these are these are cool lanterns. They are. Ah. I gave the old three nuns a little bit of a rest. Man, this is the first time I've been enjoying him, this blend for uh, for a week now. I think so much better. When you give certain blends a rest and you come back to them, then your palate readjusts, and then it's a, it's like a new experience again. Mm -hmm. If I was to enjoy this on a regular basis, it wouldn't be the same. It would, I wouldn't taste it as well. And you don't want to abuse this stuff. You really don't. It's a nice treat for the weekend, right? I think so. With all things, moderation is key, <laughs> except for lanterns. <laughs> uh, yeah, moderation really is an important thing to exercise in a lot of things. It really is. 
That's my philosophy anyways. Do as you will, but that's that's me right there. Well, friends, I have a little bit of an update on something that you were completely unaware of. Um, I have a lantern come, well, it came today. But I'm not gonna share it, no. And I'll tell you why. It's because it's technically my Christmas present. Yeah. The missus decided to buy me a lantern and uh, you know, I helped pick it out of course. And uh, one of the members was selling it and it's a, it's a pretty rare example. It's a rare lantern, I'm not gonna say more than that, but it is really quite rare. And I've been wanting one of these for a while and it just presented itself and I worked with the, with the seller and we came to a, you know a deal and so yeah it's awesome it just arrived yesterday uh, today this morning um, so I will be opening it Christmas morning in Tucson Arizona for Christmas that where that's what we're gonna do so with that being said <laughs> uh, I will be making a video out there in Saguaro National Park uh, just in that area that's where my sister-in-law lives and we'll be staying with her uh, for Christmas so when we have Christmas. I'll do a video out there amongst the uh, amongst the the saguaro cactus and the mesquite trees and the desert sand and the beautiful old volcanic rock in Saguaro National Park. So, with that being said, stay tuned for a Christmas video. That's right. So when I get it uh, open and everything, and I you know after breakfast and we do our gift exchange in the morning christmas morning that is and we'll you know everyone will do their own thing and um i'll grab a cup of coffee and the lantern and make a video and probably one of these of course is usually customary on christmas morning i usually have a nice pipe on christmas morning so be aware of that happening so um definitely if you have not subscribed yet definitely do so and click the notification bell so you will be notified when that video will upload or be available. So, of course, there'll be more videos before then, but just wanted to put that out there. So keep your eyes peeled for a video on Christmas Day, uh, December 25th. So with that being said, we'll have a good time and we'll share some fun stuff. And, uh, of course, I'll be able to wish all of you a very happy Christmas holiday. Merry Christmas, whatever. However you choose to observe that holiday, you you just enjoy it. And I will be able to wish you guys the best. So, we're burning a nice okay lantern, a little tobacco, on a beautiful Friday afternoon. Doesn't get better than that, friends. It really doesn't. It's, yeah. Eh, right now I'm also charging the old battery to the Dodge. It's, uh, you know, it sits out here. Uh, and I drive it once uh, or twice a week, and you know that's fine. But the temperatures have been changing, and so with the temperatures change, two things happen with automobiles. Well, especially antique six volt, you know, battery related material. So um, the battery will start to lose; it will drain some. It will lose a little pep over the time with the temperature change, up and down, up and down. Um, and then also t the tires will lose pressure a little bit over time, uh, especially with the pressure changes and the, you know, the warmth of the day and the cold of the night. Uh, today it was about 65 was the high today. And that's, that's brisk. That's a brisk day for Southern California. Uh, and at night we've been getting down to 42, 44, uh, which is, that's brisk. That's chilly for here. Okay. Now I know the rest of the country is in much cooler temperatures downright cold I'm sure uh, but for Los Angeles County that's kind of a cold snap it is it is I love it I absolutely love it it's great um, I get to wear my Pendleton's a little more comfortably uh, put on a nice coat wear a nice hat I mean I do anyways but it's a lot more comfortable when it's actually chilly outside so there you go but that's what we're dealing with so this is a beautiful lantern very happy with it Steve if you're watching thanks again for sending this to me and uh, working with me on the price and everything and uh, I love it it's great I probably won't do much of a cleanup I probably will just if anything I'll do a little bit of WD-40 and just wipe it down and uh, that's about it yeah it's got great sweated tin or solder as you call it um, it's just a really nice survivor it's a great example 
and uh, it was turnkey. I didn't. I haven't done anything to it except for adding fuel and a new wick. It didn't have a wick before, so I put a new wick in there, and that thing is off to the races. So yeah, it's a really cool lantern. Yeah, the OKs are great. They're fun lanterns, and they are definitely popular. That's why the prices have gotten to where they are now, um, because there's only so many to go around. There's only so many to go around. They only made so many, and only so many exist. So if you find one, and it's under three hundred dollars. That's actually a, a fair price, depending on the condition, of course. If you find it for less than 100 bucks, don't hesitate. Snag it. Grab it. Yes. So, best of luck to all those out there picking and searching and hunting for this stuff. Uh, I hope you find what you're looking for and at a right price. Awesome. Well, friends, you guys take it easy, and we'll see you again on Wednesday. All right. Bye-bye for now.